Einstein's brain was kidnapped immediately after his death, which may seem like the scenario of a science fantasy B-movie. The brains of geniuses were frequently kept in the 19th century so that scientists may try to discover the source of that person's intellect. For example, half of Charles Babbage's brain, developer of the first calculating computer, is still on exhibit in London's Hunterian Museum of the Royal College of Surgeons. Einstein was well aware that scientists would want to investigate his brain after his death, and specifically prohibited it, knowing that such studies seldom generated significant information. When Einstein died in the early hours of April 18, 1955, at Princeton Hospital, the pathologist who examined him, Dr. Thomas Harvey, chose to take the brain on his own initiative for future research. Dr. Harvey brought Einstein's brain home, disassembled it into 240 pieces, and preserved it in two celloidin-filled canning jars. Hans Albert Einstein, Einstein's son, learned of the theft shortly after his father's cremation and was enraged. Dr. Harvey, on the other hand, persuaded him to let him retain the brain. The unlawful removal of the world's most famous physicist's brain has professional ramifications for Dr. Harvey. He eventually lost both his employment at Princeton Hospital and his wife, and he relocated to the Midwest, where he worked as a physician or as the director of a research laboratory. He preserved Einstein's brain for several decades, even putting it in a cider box under a beer refrigerator at one time, in the hopes of revealing the mysteries of Einstein's genius. Until 1978, when a reporter tracked down Harvey in Wichita, Kansas, the fate of Einstein's brain remained mostly unknown. The journal article on Harvey sparked a deluge of requests for brain samples to be analyzed, and scientists began publishing their findings in 1985. Many of these studies claimed to have discovered differences between Einstein's brain and that of a normal individual, but they lacked representative control groups, casting doubt on their findings. Even if these experiments had been carried out more efficiently, neurology has yet to demonstrate whether the physical architecture of the brain influence a person's intellect. Einstein's brain is now housed at Penn Medicine Princeton Medical Center in Plainsboro, New Jersey. No one, not even researchers, is allowed to see it. Many more portions of Einstein's brain may be found across America. According to Dr. Harvey's habit of giving away pieces of Einstein's brain to interested acquaintances,